what are the data on how females signal, um, let's just say, you know, testosterone, estrogen, and um, other, you know, uh, relevant hormones, and for males as well, what are the what are the external signals sure. so, or behavior or behavioral signals? Yeah, so there's so they, that there's, that's a really important point that you made because they both you know those things go together. So uh, it's been most controversial for females, but you know, in my view, the data is pretty clear, and it you know it, it aligns, I think, with our own intuitions um, just from from daily life. Which is, well, some things are are apparently not consciously perceptible. It's like hard to report, but um, but through studies where you just ask males for like, okay, is this, you know, how attractive is this woman or et cetera, um, that there are changes in the face, for example. And that's been one argument is that, this is going to sound funny, but that the signals that in non-human primates are in the rear are not, because we're walking upright, you mm -hmm. can't see that really. So mm -hmm. now it's kind of in, in the face. And so these changes that um, happen that that the ovulatory cycle is reflected in the turgidity, the, how, how tight the skin is in the face because it gets a little plumper and a little bit redder. And we may not be consciously aware of that, but the, that, that it's there, right? And it shows up in sort of preference data when, when, you, when you ask heterosexual males, you know, do you've, you know, how attractive is this woman, et cetera. So that, that seems to be the case. Um, and also um, behavioral, you know, so, so uh, sort of, flirtatious behavior. Um, Increases around the time of ovulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, there is a classic study that, um, <laughs> that exotic dancers, strippers, um, would actually get bigger tips, more tips when they were ovulating than when they're not ovulating. Interesting. Uh, so there may be- And it, know, could be by, it could be by virtue of their, their physical, behavior, their dance, but it, it could be the way they, they dance, proximity to the, all, all, uh, to the, what I guess, now, the observers, that, clients, whatever you call right, them. That, yeah. I, I, I don't recall that being mm -hmm. um, quantified, but, mm -hmm. um, but it suggests that there's, there's a latent signal there. And that uh, men are uh, unconsciously processing this. They're not saying, oh, her cheeks are particularly yeah, exactly. uh, uh, plump and red right now. They're that, um, but that if you measure their ratings or right. their scores of, of attractiveness, when she's ovulating, it's these features that are, that might be drawing out that response. Correct. We can take this back to the monkey porn studies, which is, was our first real foray into trying to quantify the uh, the value of various kinds of social information for guiding decisions. And we already came into this uh, with a sense that like, yeah, things like status, physical prowess, mating status, um, you know, are you, are you, um, you look like a good mate, bad mate, are you in, in mating uh, condition, you know, are you, et cetera. And so when, you know, you think about that, like how do you ask a monkey that question? You could ask them. They're not going to tell you because they, they can't talk. But you have to develop a behavioral way to elicit that. And so what we did, I think it was pretty clever, was to riff on the studies that you know I had already done, uh, looking at varying the expected value of two options. So this was the work I did as a postdoc with Paul Glimcher, where we um, revealed uh, economic signals in the brain and the in the parietal cortex, an, an area between where visual signals come in and, and where you make a choice um, to, to, to make a behavioral response. And we varied, like in this case, monkeys don't work for money, though they'll work for juice. Okay, and it's been actually, it's really fun. You spend a lot of time figuring out what juice they really love best. And to, then economically, you would vary like the size of the juice reward that each of the two offered or its probability while maintaining size constant, that when you combine those, you multiply those together, you get expected value. That's the first model of economic decision-making that was really ever developed, right? You compute the expected value, different options, you choose the one that has the highest value. It, it you know, doesn't work all the time, but it's sort of a, a rough proxy. And we showed that, yeah, neurons and parietal cortex signal that. Monkeys are good economists. They choose the one that has a higher expected value. Okay, so now take that experiment. I'm gonna have monkeys choosing between two options that vary in how much juice they pay out. But I'm also going to pop up a picture when they choose one of them, okay? And they don't know what picture is coming up, but the picture is going to be it could be it could be a, a nothing burger, just like some gray square. It doesn't mean anything. 
or it could be <laughs> the, the, the perineum or of a female, if it were males that we were studying. We did this with males, uh, sorry, females making choices eventually as well. Could be face of a dominant male, face of a subordinate male, face of a female, et cetera, What's et the equivalent of, of the uh, swollen taint of a female monkey um, <laughs> for if you reverse the experiment and it's the female monkey who's making a choice about male monkeys, what do they, what do they find really attractive in a male monkey? Yeah, so it's the taint of the male monkey because okay. it's providing a signal so about so how much- Monkeys looking at taints yeah, of how monkeys. much testosterone is circul- you know, that they've got mm-hmm. on board basically, which mm-hmm. is a good predictor of their status. Um, it's a good predictor of their, you know, fighting ability, all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And, and if you're a female, and you, you, that, that, that's, that's a reasonable kind of choice to make, because if you have male offspring and females are predisposed to choose that, then they'll, your male offspring are gonna, gonna mm-hmm. do pretty well. So that's what we did. And uh, we varied how much juice. So sometimes monkeys would get paid, they'd have to give up juice to see the pictures. Sometimes they get paid more to see the pictures. And what we did then is we, we, we construct a choice curve and we use the differential, if that if it's not 50-50, if it slides one way or the other, it tells us that monkeys are, are paying X amount to, to see certain kinds of pictures, or you have to overpay them, right? And so what did we find? It was really, I think, scientifically revealing, but it's pretty fun. People got it immediately. Uh, they will pay. Juice. Juice. They will give up juice. They will pay it to see pictures of the perineum, the, the hindquarters of females. Mm-hmm. This was an original study. It was in male monkeys. They will pay to see the faces of dominant males, and you had to pay them to see the faces of subordinate males. Okay, so... <laughs> so, so, fe- so females will give up juice to see the taints of testosterone-rich male monkeys, and male... Monkeys will pay juice to see the swollen taints of female monkeys yeah. that are, because of the swelling, yeah. indicates a better reproductive competence. Yeah. Yes, better. Condi- you know, now's the time. The time is ripe. Okay, mm-hmm. to 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 mate. But it's just in general, it's a signal that is mm-hmm. like what we would say is it's important. It has value. Monkey right? porn. It's something you should track. Yeah. And in fact, yeah, they're paying for it. So, you know, this just blew up on the internet even back then. It was like suddenly mil- every website was like, oh, you proven monkey porn, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was kind of a fun ride. It did. It was a New York Times uh, idea of the year uh, in 2005, which was, um, again, kind of shocking. You know, there's like <laughs> well, a it, I think word on that. But, but well, people, pe- it makes sense. And mm-hmm. it, the thing I want to point out is that... Um, we ran this same experiment in people, not with uh, unclothed humans. So we, we used, and we used only, well, no, it was, it was, and we had to create our own stimulus set because all the stimulus sets that were out there for visual studies of humans were like a bunch of, you know, German people looking very dour. They were very well controlled and we wanted something that was more natural. So we downloaded thousands of photos from this website, hotornot.com. I don't know if you recall that, but it was a website where you could upload pictures and people would rate you. I mean, hmm. now that <laughs> is like- Probably wouldn't be allowed now. I remember, be allowed. Rate, I remember rate my pet. <laughs> rate my pet, rate my professor, I think, which is still around. And we were saying rate. Rate, yes. Rate. Rate. With a T, my pet. Yeah. But this was hotornot.com. So you get all these really natural looking. And then we had, this was really funny though too. Um, so we had uh, a group of, separate groups of raters uh, from the people who we actually tested in the experiment. So we had you know, a group of males, heterosexual males, rating the female photos and vice versa. And um, that was interesting in its own right. So we were just trying to establish, like, we're not saying why they're attracted or anything like that, just like, let's measure it, okay? And it was really fun because, um, you know, by the, it, it took, it was hard work. You're having to do one every three seconds. And it took like an hour. And um, the, uh, you know, when the women were done rating, they're like, okay, I'm glad that's over. Uh, the, the hour's over and our male raters were like, did you have any more? Um, you know, can, I, I, I'd be happy to sit here and rate more photographs for you. Interesting. Um, so, so women got sort of like, uh, they got tired of rating males for attractiveness. Yes. Males did not tire Never. of rating they, females they, for they attractiveness. They did not at all, which is, that's anecdotal, but it's still, yeah, I think it's revealing. Then we ran the pay-per-view experiment, just like in monkeys uh, on pay-per-view. humans. Pay-per-view. And we also uh, ran a 
couple of other economically, you know, econo standard economic tasks. One would be how long are you willing to wait? So that's a delayed discounting. Like, mm -hmm. and generally you you will wait longer for a bigger reward, mm -hmm. and a smaller reward. And also, how hard would you work? And we the work was like you had to alternate pressing two keys on a keyboard. It was really just menial, laborious, you know, et cetera. So um, the two interesting. Just sociologically, it's interesting what comes out of this. Uh, our female subjects um, basically wouldn't give up money. They, they were working for money. They were hearing the sound of coins coming out of a slot machine, which was proportional to how much money they actually got. Real money. Choice. Real money. Mm -hmm. If you ignored the pictures, you'd go home with like $17 uh, mm -hmm. extra compared to if, if you were influenced by them. And the females did really well economically. So they pretty much kind of ignored the pictures of the males, even though they were rated, even the ones that were super hot, they were not very uh, concerned with that. For the males, it was the exact opposite. So the males are giving up essentially, they're paying, and they, they had thousands of trials, they're paying somewhere between a half and three quarters of a cent to see images of women who are rated in the top like third. Of, of attractiveness. They also would wait significantly longer and they would work really hard. It was like rats pressing for cocaine, wow. quite literally, to keep those pictures up on the screen. Okay, so that's the setting. We've established in monkeys and in people similar economic principles uh, that are guiding social, uh, you call it attention, social valuation, whatever. So we're like, okay, let's go look in the brain. So we did an MRI experiment, fMRI experiment to measure measured blood flow to you know different parts of the brain. Um, in we only tested males um, because they were the ones who displayed uh, you know differential preferences there. And what we found is that um, kind of parts of the visual system that are involved in encoding faces, but then the reward system was activated and tracked linearly how much money, these guys were paying to see uh, images. There's basically the trade-off value, the mm -hmm. currency, the translation of pictures into money, okay? Then in monkeys, we studied all the same areas, but now we could record from individual neurons in those areas rather than looking at blood flow, which is a, a crude proxy. And we found exactly the same thing, which is that you know, neurons in the reward system uh, were spontaneously and strongly activated by those um, pictures, you know, that, um, and it, that made sense, right? So the pictures of the perineum of females um, by uh, dominant male faces. Um, and that correspondence, I thought, was pretty compelling. 